Last year, we finished in fourth place in the league. We've now got some amazing facilities and we are officially in the Europa Conference League, hoping we have a good tie and we can get to the group stage for the very first time. The question is, could we do it? And is my accession of getting affiliate clubs going to come back to bite me in the next coming years? I've already got an idea of who I want to add to my collection in the upcoming seasons. We are predicted to finish in 11th place, our highest predicted finish so far. And we're just shy of 1 million in sponsorship money. So we're making good money regardless. So let's see how we did in Europe and if we're doing well in the league. And if our youth intake preview is once again looking promising. So first things first, we have our youth candidates preview and... Only the strikers and centre backs and one midfielders look good. Goalkeeper, not so much. Everything else is of low quality or does not exist. I would like to get a defensive midfielder soon because I think we're running thin on cover there. Alexander Prisovic is quite good still. He's getting his continental A license and hopefully he'll be improving even more. The only issue I have is his potentially his personality and his tactical style and preferred formation. If they are different, he'd be perfect. Still, we started our new season and we drew Neil Nurgis, Novi, Parza. Not great, but we then beat FK Red by two goals to one. A 93rd minute winner to do it. And then we beat Renick this by a goal to nil. Good start. Again, an 80th minute winner late on. We then took on our first opponent in the Europa Conference League and won 4 1 against the Bosnian team, Luiki Brzeg, I think is how you say it. But they were beaten. And then we took them for left in another side and beaten 2 1 to get 10 points in our first four matches. A good start there. We then won away from home in our second leg of the Europa Conference League by goal to nil. And then we won again. Modest Slokina beaten 2 0. A great start to our league campaign. Then we had a stock guard in the next round of the Europa Conference League in the playoffs and lost 1 0 the first leg. And it could have been much worse. We were terrible in this game. We then lost 2 0 to. Napadak, before we hosted Stockard and beat them 1 0 the night, but lost 3 2 overall on penalties. It was a shocker. We missed so many penalties, it was ridiculous, and the players I thought they should score missed. At least in the next game, we drew 1 0 against Palazan after being 1 0 down. At least we drew the next two games. First against Vosvodak, though they were down to 10 minutes out of the first minutes, and then 0 0 against Kukri Stancomb. We were down to 10 men inside 42 minutes and missed a penalty. TSC with our next victims, though, we've been 3 1 before we beat Red Star by two goals to nil. Good result, shows we could beat anyone. We then drew one all in the next game against Metalak and then nil nil against Kodabara before we were beaten on penalties by a lower tier serving club in FK Jacodina. This is my lowest point of my career and we were one nil up for most of the game as well. It shows you just how much we threw it away. I did rotate the side a lot, but I generally didn't think we'd lose this game. We then beat Ivajika. 3-0, before we drew Nuna against Fofadina, and then we drew 1-0 against Nabi Baza, again drawn against them, FK Red were beaten once again, in a very competitive game that was fierce, we then lost 2-1 against Nicky Niss, and then we beat Paleta Novisad by 2 to nil. before we won our next game against Modest Lokina, and then Napadak drew 1-0 against us, it was not funny, and that was the last game we had before the winter break. As things stand though, we are in fourth, though admittedly, we've only lost twice, but drawn nine times. You can see what our problems lie, can't you? We're drawing too many games. If we translate some of those draws into victories, we could be title contenders and fighting for Champions League football once again. Red Star are having a horrid season by their standards, and hopefully for our sake, we can stay above them. We've improved the facilities again, so our junior coaching and youth recruitment are now exceptional. And we got a new fit in FC Nitra. So, yay for that. We are enjoying ourselves quite nicely. A good fit to get. As to why I decided to get them, good youth facilities, exceptional academy coaching, and they're for Slovakia. So, we should be getting some good Slovakian players at some point, I like to think. Ladies and gentlemen, we actually produced the European Golden Boy, and I couldn't believe it when I first saw this, but Mika Milosevic produced. Such a good season that he was actually announced the European Golden Boy and we produced someone so good they've done that. From Serbia as a Montenegro international. That's exciting, is it not? And the fact he's got the same reward as the likes of Mbappe, De Ligt, Aguero, Haaland, Pedri, Bellingham, Joel Felix, 
that's really promising to sell at least, isn't it? But yes, we've actually got a youth intake that looks promising again. So let's talk about them. Krokomir Pampalovic is very exciting. He's got the promising winger meter description, which again is normally a good sign for a player. His personality could be worked on, but he's quick and he's got some decent attributes elsewhere. So a good sign. And we've also got a wing on the other side in the form of Boban Milosevic. And I'm just looking at him thinking he's got promise. The same personality, but I think he's got better attributes in just the technical side of things. But could definitely we worked on long term. We've also got the likes of Marko Popovic who needs work. I mean a lot of work. He's got great potential and apparently his kind of ability is quite nice. But one strength, one determination, unambitious. Not good enough. We need to work him to the bone and make him a stronger per and make him a stronger person on the personality front he needs a lot of work another left winger in the form of Denebo Petrovic and again could be worked on on ambitious personality not great he's got good acceleration good pace good crossing but could be worked on he does have good work rate but other than that there's a lot of things he can work on we've also got the likes of Sopodan Sovic and Philip Fielder definitely a deep line playmaker though 16 passing 15 technique 15 balance. He just comes across as a playmaker. He really does. We've also got the likes of Andreja Radovic. And he's 6'6", but fickle. He's got good jumping reach. But he needs work. He's got good tackling as well. Heading's not great. Mark is not great. But we can improve those. And he definitely needs a lot of work. We've also got two goalkeepers. This is the first of them. In Sudan Javesovic. And Ban's personality needs work needs a lot of work the same could be said for Dragoslav Todorovic and again this time he's determined and this is kind of why I decided to get my new head of youth development because it takes a few years for him to get into the process of things and one of the things he definitely improves on is the personality of the people and how the balanced personality head of youth development was causing these kind of terrible personality to come in and when I say terrible look at the state of this it's quite bad we need better people than that so it's a concern that I wanted to address. Since we last met though, we took a buzz and lost 1-0. Drew 2-2 against Vostovek, despite being 2-0 up. Drew 1-0 against Kukri Stankum, despite being down to 10 minutes to 10 minutes. Beat TSC 2-1. Beat Red Star 2-1. And beat Metalek 1-0. And looking at the table, we did this. So good to know that we did this okay. And hopefully we can do more and more. We're in fourth place. We're in the fight for a European spot, a second place finish again. Can we do it though? But first, for this first, we're going to talk about this. And what direct was made another affiliate of ours, and we've done that for ourselves. We have also improved our intake affiliates with uh, SC Nistra by getting in more intakes from their point of view. So good to see that's the case. We've already done that with Repetia Tomasua and, well, they haven't produced anything so far, but we could definitely work with that. So I wanted to talk about something very, very special to me, and that's the fact that my former player and coach, Philippe Gogic, has become the manager of Jeva Avajika. We will be taking him on at some point in the season. Hopefully he won't have a good time against us, and hopefully we'll do well against him. It's just cool to see that this guy is actually becoming a manager in the save after I hired him as a coach. It just makes me feel very happy indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and look at this. We lost 2 0 in the first game to Kurabawa, which is not ideal to say the least. We then drew Neil Nergas Java Avajika, so our former player got a point off us. We then won 4 1 in this game against Volfagina, so at least we got that going for ourselves. Then we had the last seven games of the campaign. We drew 2 2 in the first game against Nepadak, then drew 1 0 against Radniki Nis, then drew 1 0 against TSC with a 93rd minute equalizer from Popolovic getting the goal. Then we lost 1-0 to Kakuri Stonecomb. Then we lost 1-0 against Parzan. Then we lost 2-0 against Red Star. And then we lost 1-0 to Vostovek. We actually ballsed up the second part of the season, the last seven games, and we finished 12 points off fourth to finish in fifth. Yeah, for some reason, we chose to lose half our games in the next part of the season and absolutely capitulate in a way I've not seen our team do in a very long time. So that's great. At least we're in Europe, I suppose, but it could have been more than that. If we didn't lose half those games, we could potentially have been fighting for full third or second. And look at us. 
That's just bad. Why are we doing this to ourselves, honestly? But yeah, Cafe is not for anymore because generally, I don't think we're expected to do much more than that. We did get rid of a lot of players and none of them were really worth noticing talking about because I genuinely didn't think they were worth talking about at all. We did send out a load of players on loan though, so there's that. Barkic actually went out on loan and I'm going to let him go at the end of the season. And yeah, the fact we were expected to be top half apparently, which is a lie, but we are finishing fifth place, so there's that. And at least we did ourselves just as suppose and get fifth place, but we did not deserve to be capitulating as hard as we did. That is terrible form at the end of the season i've not experienced anything like that in this part of the season before to my knowledge so hopefully that can be improved at some point but yeah fourth qualifier round defeat to stockgard hopefully we can beat them next time and first round defeat in the cup yeah we need to improve a few things i think matt so remember 3-1 victory against tsc biggest win is a 4-1 win in the europa Conference league and the goal of the season was actually in the 2-2 draw against nepodak and it was like Konatar. And I know this goal because I am so happy about it. It was one of my favorite goals I've ever seen. And I'll show you this now. I'm going to say this here now. This is from my own corner and Konatar does this. I'm going to ask you this once this has happened. Is that the best goal you've ever seen from a solo point of view? Let me know in the comments down below. I want to hear your thoughts on that. In fact, we actually had more sponsorship money come after the start of the season. And we're now up to 1.01 million, which is great. We've made more money in broadcast revenue. We've made money everywhere, really. In competition prize money, we've made 800,000. And we're making lots of money. We're making 245,000 in merchandise as well. So it's good to see we're making quite a bit of money this year. And we're now a freestyle team. But yeah, a lot of it was this. And you can see the problems we potentially have. Popovich was not great. Neither was the Vuk. And... Yeah, hopefully that can be improved at some point. But accolades, we actually won the most of the year last season, so that's surprising. And Milosevic is the player uh, and young player this season. Konata was the goal of the season in his first outing. And uh, Milosevic got 15 goals. Not great. Patasic got 7 assists. Milosevic got 6 say, the match awards and a high duration of 7.3. While Colón got 113 passes per, played per 90. Pasic has now got the most appearances by a single player. And Milos Jovanovic is the youngest ever goal scorer of 15 years and 286 days. That's a lot to talk about. The first things first, we're going to talk about the league and the fact that FK Red and Novi Paza both survived. The fact that we did not beat Novi Paza at all in the two matches we had against them is concerning. But FK Red winning their game shows that they weren't up by a fluke. They had to come from 1-0 down to win 3-1 though. But they still survived. And the team's going down being Jovo Avajika. So my former player turned manager is going to be in the second tier next year. And Marades Lokisina also down again because they always seem to go down. The teams coming up though are Spartak, Spartika and Zlatibor. Because they had to always come up. It feels like those two teams always seem to be the teams that come up. And it says a lot. But first things first. Let's talk about the players before we leave. Belic is looking good again and is exciting. Jevasevic is not really improving, but he's a definite backup goalkeeper at this point. But with Zoran Jankovic and Drakislav Sadejovic, he's got a lot of competition at this point to really, you know, keep his spot. Right back, Popovic might be leaving. I have not decided yet, but I don't think he's good enough for the team anymore. He's 31, which I know sounds like a better than insult. I'm saying he's not good enough anymore, but I look at him and I think, you need work. You need a lot of work. And you're not going to get any better. What I am planning on doing though. Is actually having Dijan Zikovic be the first choice next year. I know that sounds crazy. At 23. But. He's spirited. He's getting better. He doesn't have any of the cons that Popovic has. And he is one of those players that feels like he's doing well. The fact he's improved this much is a good sign. He can play at both wings apparently. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. But he's better than what we have right now. To no be surprised, the European golden boy is our best centre-back. And yes, he's just exciting. He's inconsistent, which is the only downside to him. But he's loved by the fans. He's definitely become a club legend. He's got 18 goals and 144 appearances, which as a centre-back is quite good. Also being a second best centre-back is a good sign. And I wouldn't be shocked if he stays long-term. He is one of the house Verona though, so that could change. Raslav Murdo is quite good and is definitely improving. So if... We lose one of our centre-backs. This guy can slot in straight away, which is a good sign. And Dusan Madic is also pretty good. But he's also 17. He's not amazing yet. I say he's pretty good. 
He's not like he's going to be first choice right now, and I might need to give him a loan spell at some point, but I don't think next year is the year for that. Rakitic could be losing his spot. Um, he played 18 times, but didn't really impress. I say he didn't really impress. He got 6.8 rating. But with Milanovic improving and actually potentially being better, I say improving with all the red arrows going down, he definitely feels like a player that could definitely throw a spell of the work there. And we do have the likes of Joseph Bozip, who can get first team football. I actually played him quite a few times last year. And I might have made a mistake in that regards, but nothing like experience to help a progression, right? So with Cologne being our first choice DM and still sticking around with us, we've actually managed to convince most of the players to stay around with new contracts, which is why we're excited and showing a lot of these players. Good player for his division. Momic might be losing his spot next year. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. He has been injured, but... I genuinely think we need to keep him around at some point. And the fact this guy's our third best DM outright is concerning. And the fact that we've got a centre-back who could play the DM is a bit concerning. But what can you do? Well, Tomovic being our best midfielder is not really a shock anymore. And he kind of has that thrown to himself, effectively. He's only a decent player for this division, so it's a bit of concern there. And we've got Rakitic, who is his second choice and partner, effectively. He's also a decent player, but Igor Petrovic, I think, is going to be in the first team next year. I've already been giving him a first team football when there were two players needed the rest, and he's definitely benefited from that. So we've got a superstar in the making here. I really do believe that. I think he will be a first choice player in the next year or two. I genuinely believe it. Lazar Pasic is definitely keeping his spot, but I don't know how much longer he'll be around for. I think. Sooner or later, he'll lose his spot to his successor, really. And Milos Jovanovic is his successor. Two goals in the league last year. Three goals in all competitions. He is one of those players that is going to get better and better. And I think will be our first choice right ringer in the future. So, yeah. I bring him every so often for the bench appearance. He's definitely benefited from that. Also, the fact that Popovic is our third choice right winger in terms of ability is a bit concerning. I can see it, but I think striker is definitely where he needs to be playing more. And he's really worth between 475,000 to 1.2 million. Left wing is not surprising to see Vuk kind of make an exploit his own since, you know, he kind of made his own at this point in time. Dijkovic is second choice, but, and I couldn't believe I'm saying this, but he could be losing out his spot to Vladimir Konatar, who is actually getting better. And he's looking quite promising. So I think this guy's our successor to Vuk long term. I really do believe that. He got a goal last year too. You know, his first, that goal that he got for goal of the season. That's his only ever goal he scored for us. Not a bad way to introduce yourself, is it? Militic is definitely one of those players that has hot and cold seasons. And is very hot and cold at times. He got 12 goals in the league. But he had periods of spells where he was just not very good. But with the likes of Markovic now being good enough to really fight for that spot, I'm happy because we've now got options up front potentially to rotate if we needed to. He's not amazing, but he's consistent. Militic isn't. So Markovic is definitely, I think, an option now to really fight for a striker position. And I'm excited for it. So hopefully he could do more of that. We've also got the likes of Desen Rasic, who's out on loan. I don't think he will be in the first choice at all next year, but he's definitely not sure if we were to send out alone again to get first in football and he can come back and be much, much stronger. He's exciting to me, so he definitely needs work and the experience he's getting on loan is very good and hopefully he'll get a good team next year to take him on. So, good times. Before we leave though, we're now actually the 8th best team on paper and a 50 to 1 odd. So, exciting times for the future, I like to think. Wouldn't you agree? But either way, I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. Where do you think we'll be next year? Do you think we can recover from the horror end of the season for next year? And how far do you think we'll get into Europa Conference League next year after finishing fifth this year? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. But either way, until next time, bye and well, good night.